In this video on our XR series, we will start looking at routing and we will begin with the easy static routing. So on uh, my iOS node, I have configured a loopback 0, 2.2.2.2. And I will just hop in and do the configuration. So interface loopback 0, an IP address 2.2.2. .2 .2 .2 and it's a slash 32. And the idea is that I should be able to ping from my XR node to the iOS node loopback zero. So as you can see, I've got my loopback zero here. And I go back to my XR node and see if I can ping it. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to ping it because I haven't configured anything yet. validating that I don't have a root for 2.2.2.2. .2 so before I go ahead, I'll just configure a default root. And this is just to make things simple. So this default root is pointing at the interface IP address on the Exxon node. You can see here on the show IP interface brief on the link uh, address, this is the iOS device IP address, and my next hope is my next hop is dot zero. So I still don't have uh, obviously a root. Let's start configuring the uh, static routing. So it is done a little bit differently on XR. So you have to go under the router static and choose an address family, and the options are. RPv4 or RPv6. So you have to be specific on what you are configuring. So I put the loopback zero on the iOS node with the subnet and the next hop, which is the dot one on the iOS node. As you can see, as I've mentioned, it's either RPv4 or RPv6 address families. So let's see how it looks when, it's, when you have the whole configuration. So you have router static, set the address family, and then you put your static root, and then you commit. So at this point here, I should be able to ping across. Validating if I have a root, and yes, I do have a root now, and it's over 10.1.1.1. and I can ping across. So a few more options to look at in terms of static routing. This is, the options are the same uh, as in iOS, obviously, it's just the way they are configured that are different. So I'll go back in and pull my uh, static route. And these are the options that you can, you can add an interface at the end, or you can have a, uh, a floating static route. So you select a distance metric, 220 in my case. You can also add descriptions. So this helps to identify the, the routes, it's just a very good housekeeping. So let's take a look at the final configuration. As you can see, I'm removing the plain static root, if, if, uh, static root, if you like, and then adding the one that has more information. It has the description, and you also had the, uh, the, the additional metric. I hope you found this short video informative, and thank you for watching.